Um, tina koutou katoa, tairi te awa, a ngātua te maunga, kaitahu te iwi nō Sarah Haumahau. My name is Sarah Haum, kaitahu and Pākehā, uh, Executive Director of the New Zealand Drug Foundation. Uh, it's an honour to um, present to you uh, such a looking and intelligent group of um, MPs today, MPs and Ministers. Um, and um, I also just want to talk all the statements of that previous submitter. Um, and on behalf of the New Zealand Drug Foundation, I, I'd really like to submit in support of the bill, in particular its attempts to achieve an equitable, accessible, cohesive and city based health system. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to truly deliver on those outcomes. Ingari, I'd like to um, highlight that for some, in particular people who use drugs or are additionally marginalised from the health system, the gap is enormous and to achieve these outcomes delivery for and with these groups must be explicitly baked in from the outset. It must be one of the measures for success of our health system, a target, a focus, a principle. People with lived experience and civil society need to be at the governance table for this shift to be actually realised um, because the shift we need is seismic. When I say people who use drugs most most people here, bad, did it to themselves, they should know better. Not my problem, criminals, gang members, and for the record, most people who use drugs are neither of those former things, uh, aside from their drug use. This attitude is one that we've been taught to think through years of the now debunked war on drugs, so-called war on drugs, and they're also really similar to years gone by attitudes to, towards people who experience mental distress or have um, attempted suicide. These attitudes also exist throughout the health system among doctors, clinicians, public health experts, health promoters, funders and planners, perhaps even among those of us in this virtual room, although um, I'm really pleased to um, meet with you all today and um, I'll just leave that there. Therefore, people who experience harm from drug use cannot get the health care that they need. They do not receive access to treatment when they need it. There is a lack of acute care for them and in fact they can be prosecuted if somebody calls um, for medical help because there's been an overdose that, that those people can be prosecuted in the process. They don't talk to their GPs about their drug use or even attend a GP clinic at all, depending on the other uh, factors of marginalisation involved. And they can expect to be met with judgment and poor information if they do. They're far less likely to receive any public health information or interventions. 1.2 million New Zealanders are at moderate to high risk of problematic substance use and 100,000 have severe symptoms, but only half of those are able to access support. Delta was able to get a foothold here largely because of this marginalisation. During the COVID vaccine rollout and Delta, last year, Delta outbreak last year, after some advocacy from civil society, people with addictions were actually put on the high priority group for the vaccine rollout. Yet by the end of November, people in, and can I just emphasise, DHB funded AOD treatment trailed the general population by a country mile with only 54% having had two doses. The wider drug using population uh, clearly continue to trail behind that even further. We, as the Drug Foundation, lobbied absolutely <laughs> exhaustively everyone we could at every level of the health system to roll out the vaccination in a way that the evidence clearly stated was needed and to amend the other interventions also. But the system isn't compelled to respond to this group and perhaps aren't even really sure, sure that they know how to. This was despite Delta actually being concentrated in among drug people who use drugs and um, despite, uh, I'm told, them presenting uh, to hospital and being among those who have uh, died from COVID. We lobbied, educated, informed, but the system couldn't respond and to date has only vaguely managed to make any inroads. This failing has put everyone's health at risk, not just people who use drugs, because whether you care about equity or not, in public health, failing the marginalised mean we fail everyone. So it will take strong, enforceable, explicit requirements, goals and incentives 
it will take people with lived experience in civil society to have ownership and input. So we are asking in our submission, which I'm sure you've read how to cover, uh, for involvement of people with lived experience in civil society, replace reference to uh, consumers. When they're not consumers, and in fact, as noted, some aren't even receiving healthcare at all. Similar to file to peer, lived experience, involvement and delivery, decision-making is needed and improves efficacy that has been proven. Create opportunities in the system for co-design, us at the table. Um, we give some examples of that on page 12 for clause 71B, for example, or in the locality um, plans. Aim to eliminate health disparities, not reduce them. Honor tetiriti and replace the treaty and principles mentions with the original binding document. And name the marginalized groups in the health system principles, the health plan, the government policy statement. Include those marginalized groups, people who have used psychoactive substances, the rainbow community, require the system to report on its progress of achieving equity for all of those groups. And just lastly, uh, why people, alcohol, our most harmful substance, it creates a huge health burden. We need to ring fence that alcohol levy. We need to spend it on proper regulation, policy, health promotion and community action. We've provided a list of the functions carried out by Te Hiringa Hauora and those that were lost from the restructure of the Alcohol Advisory Council. Hilda.